interesting, but not as good as you think. Hey guys, this is my review for Don't Breathe. I just came back from PAX last weekend. It was the first movie I saw upon returning. I do have some PAX videos that I am going to show you guys in a few weeks. Uh, otherwise, Don't Breathe. Now, there was two reasons why I was really excited for this film. One, the premise of a blind man basically having complete control in his own house, despite the fact that him being blind, was a cool idea. Also, it had Stephen Lang in it, and Stephen Lang was my favorite part of Avatar. Yes, his character was terrible, but he was entertaining. The first thing you'll come across in this film is that you won't like any of the main characters. You may like the Goosebumps kid, but I hated the main, the leader of the group whose name was Money. He's terrible. Uh, the girl, I didn't really care for her much either. You'll also realize that, hmm, despite the fact that he's blind, they decide to rob him at night with him in the house. And they say, oh yeah, he'll have the money in there from this event that happened previous in his life. When you get past the first 10 minutes of it, then you get hooked. Because after that stupidness, then comes the twist turn where it turns out that the blind man actually has control of his own house and the camera work was exceptionally well done in the first half of the film. It was very creative. You could tell the DOP was doing what he could with what he had and he was able to make some pretty intriguing and creative shots. However, halfway through the film that creativeness kind of disappeared and it turned into a very normal sort of setting. He kind of lost that style that he had at the beginning. Otherwise, it does appear here and there, but that real creative, unique look that the film had at the start kind of dissipates. There are some pretty intriguing scenes in this film, however. There's a scene where they move through the basement in the dark, where he obviously has complete control over, and that was really cool with the camera work of them with the pupil with their pupils completely dilated or I can't remember it was so black because they can't see anything they're trying to suck in the light the twists of this film actually was something I didn't expect the only problem is when you think about how he was able to do that you realize that it's impossible because he's blind as many awesome points as there are in this film there are some really stupid stupid silly moments the dog which actually was really cool at first you can definitely tell that the director and the writers and people definitely had a Cujo hard on because there's a lot of Cujo references in this film however there's a part where a dog chases the girl through a crawl space in between the first and second floor and it's supposed to be terrifying but the problem is the dog has such this cute face on the fact that you're seeing this giant ass dog just run through this crawl space was really stupid however the crawl space was way too big in the first place there are some twists and turns that are quite cool there are some oh whoa moments however they when you think about them they're actually not that good however i did like how the film ended until the last shot if the film had ended before that last cut that would have been perfect but is this film as scary as all the critics are saying no it's not it's a cool concept, it's intriguing, the fact that it's just a real person, there's no supernatural element to it, that is also a terrifying aspect, but it's not the scariest movie American horror film in 20 years like that one critic says, it's not. There's a lot scarier movies than that. Babadook was a scary movie. The Conjuring was scarier. The In Insidious was way scarier than this movie, in my opinion. Is it creepy and twisted? Yes. Is it as good as people say it is? No, it's not. For every interesting aspect there is of the story and its creative idea, the creative cinematography, you just don't care for any of these characters. You're actually cheering for the blind guy at first until you figure out what he's doing on, and then you really can't cheer for anyone. It was entertaining. I'll admit it was a well-made film for what it had. Did it have some stupid moments? Yes. Did I enjoy it? Not that much, but I still will give it credit for where it's due. Don't Breathe gets a 4 out of 7 from me.
Anyway guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this review. I will be putting up some PAX videos, including the game that I enjoyed the most at PAX, Blasters of the Universe, which was made by a company in Toronto. So anyways, that video coming up soon. See you guys later.